Hey guys and welcome to my channel. I am Crystal O and today I'm going to be talking about the three things nobody tells you about before you get married. So the only reason why I'm making this video is because I feel like there are so many other engaged women or women who are actually in marriage who may be having the same like thoughts or maybe even wondering about things that they would need to know before getting married or just things that they may have never thought about um, before getting married. So I've even taken the liberty of talking to women who are engaged, who are actually married and who are actually single, who would maybe think about marriage and questions they never have had answered. Um, so these are just a few things that I'm going to pinpoint on from a more so Christian perspective because it is coming from my own personal life um, in terms of my marriage and kind of like what I've noticed that is never ever talked about. And if you know anything about me, I love, love, love to share. So it is my hope that by the end of this video, you'll have a little bit more insight into marriage and maybe some of your unanswered questions will be answered. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get Can y'all see I'm wearing my wifey shirt? I had to represent real quick. All right, so the first thing that I would definitely say is that nobody tells you about how hard or maybe easy for you, depending on who you are, but how hard it is to change your name. Like one, it's not only the act of physically changing your name, but actually mentally getting to a place where you're comfortable with a whole name change. Like no longer will you be known as so-and-so inserts last name, but you will be now be known as a whole different person because your last name is different. So every time you write your name, it's gonna be different. Every time you are called on or announced or whatever it is, it's gonna be different. And I don't know about you, but for me, I really, really struggled in doing that. I really struggled in accepting a last name change. And don't get me wrong, I love my husband's last name. I'm so proud of what it means. But the fact that I had lived so long with my last name made me feel so comfortable in that. And I had a piece of my identity in that. Like I had been always known as Crystal OG. So to me, it was just so hard. I literally fought it so hard. Um, and it was until a point where I just started asking other married women, like, how did you do it? How did you do it? And they were like, it was hard. Like, a lot of women actually make their last name their middle name because it's like they want to keep a piece of that past and that history that's really important to them still belonging in their name. They want, they still want it to be a part of their name. Um, so that's kind of how I felt too. I was just like, man, like I really, really desire for this to be somehow a part of my name, but I don't want my name to be like a hundred letters because I'm Nigerians. I don't know about you, but my name is very, very long already. But I was like, how can I make this as simple as possible? So I went ahead and talked to my husband and of course we weren't immediately on the same page, but the more and more I expressed to him why it was so important to me, he eventually did honor that and say, hey, like, I support you in this. And I went ahead and said, okay, let me replace my second middle name with my last name. So that's basically what I ended up doing. Um, and I think that I feel more peace being able to see like, okay, that name is still a part of my legacy. I still see that I am my father's daughter. I am still, it's still in my name. It's still that collected memory that means so much to me that's still a part of me so that's one thing I can definitely say that no one really prepared me for I didn't think that it'd be an issue for me but come to turn out when I got married um, it became an issue so I didn't expect it as an issue but it literally became an issue when I got married so that's definitely something that I would consider when getting married or just you know just thinking about last name changes and of course it's all about communication. Communicate with your spouse what you you think would be best honoring or how you feel and have that conversation and be real about it. So um, that's my first point and let's get into the second point. All right, so for the second point, I literally, honestly guys, this one has been like the biggest question mark, had been the biggest question mark for me, honestly, up until like, I you know, walk down the altar, literally. I had been stressing about family planning and birth control for months prior to the wedding. Like, what am I gonna do? How am I gonna prevent babies from popping out of my body? Like, what the heck am I going to do, Jesus? And um, I just felt like no one was talking about it. Like, even Christian women who were popping out babies sometimes and not sometimes were not telling about what they were doing, what they were using, or how they were preventing themselves from getting pregnant every single year. You know, like, no one was discussing these things. And for me, this was really frustrating because I felt like, why is anyone sharing about the hardships of their lives? Because I literally am all about, like, authenticity and just vulnerability and sharing and whatever it is. I'm all about that. So... 
I was like, when I figure it out, or when I am at least like close to understanding anything about this realm of, of the world, I want to share about it. I want to share it with people so that they don't have to struggle and go through like that same anxiety that I went through or the same tension that I went through. Um, so yeah, um, birth control family planning is a huge ordeal, especially if you're not looking to have kids immediately. Um, I am currently in grad school, so I was like, hey man, like I got like what? Six more months left, let's chill out real quick. And then after that, I think let's have like a little bit of me and you time. And then let's start cooking up some babies. Like I would be totally okay with the baby coming tomorrow if that's what the Lord wills. But I, I would prefer to have a little one in the next year or so, not like today or tomorrow. But if it comes here and tomorrow, I would love it. I will accept it. I will want it because it's mine. And that's what God's wanting of me in this moment, a baby for me to take care of. And that's fine but that's kind of what I was like struggling with like okay God I'm about to finish school and I don't know what to do to prevent childbirth so I'm like doing all this research about birth control pills and non-hormonal and hormonal contraceptives and one thing I can just say guys is like research do your research there are so many articles about um, just hormonal contraceptives like birth control and you know what they do to your body and the side effects and the statistics that happen in terms of the risk that you could fall into um, in terms of having maybe like a, a stroke or a blood clot or whatever it is like there are a lot of like serious side effects to birth control pills and I would definitely say that you would have to do your research and also follow your convictions when it comes to what you believe um, should be your take on birth control pills or other forms of um, non-hormonal birth control now for me um, I we went me and my husband went through this whole like just series of like is it a sin is it not a sin and all this other stuff and of course we end up landing on that like contraceptive birth controls are not a sin um, there are so many biblical reasons resources from um, amazing um, just preachers and pastors um, that have explained why birth control pills are not a sin but I would say that there are a lot of health issues that are attached to birth control pills so you definitely want to do your research when um, considering it as an option as for us um, we started off going the non-hormonal route okay let's do non-hormonal but then we're like okay this is gonna take too long to adjust to our timing and our wedding was approaching so quickly um, and there's actually this device called the daisy it's like a a gadget I don't know how to put it but it's like a little gadget device thing and it's a non-hormonal basal temperature that takes your temperature every day it's about 99.4 percent accurate which is really really cool but it's about three hundred dollars so it's a little steep it's a little costly but um, I've heard that it's so effective so that was definitely our number one like you know actually our number one um, decision we did order it but then we realized it's gonna take so long to get it adjusted and we're not gonna have enough time before the wedding to actually know what like where I am like in my fertility like what that's gonna look like or whether I'm you know gonna get pregnant tomorrow morning type of thing so we just let that kind of slide so we're like, okay let's just use a barrier so we're like, okay let's just try condoms and we tried condoms, it wasn't really working for us, so we're like, okay, next step is birth control pills, because we didn't know what else to do in this moment. So I got on the pill, was on it for about two months, three months total, but two months like two months into it, I'm like, yeah, I'm good, girl, I'm doing great, I'm doing great. By the third month, y'all, by the third month, I was a crazy lady. I was having super bad hormonal mood swings. I was having hormonal acne. I was um, gaining so much water weight and um, I was having really, really bad migraines. And it was just not working out. Like, I was a wreck when it came to, like, my emotions. Like, I would be crying or wanting to cry on the way to work. Like, it was just not good for me, y'all. So I went ahead and got off of it. Um, and now I'm looking into kind of, like, trying a more so natural method um, which would kind of be more so like tracking my um, fertility I know people are like that's a myth it's not gonna work but you know what it's fine if it doesn't work to God be the glory a baby is coming that's fine <laughs> but at the end of the day it's just like I want to do what's best for my body like chemically and hormonally um, and not kind of get myself in that ordeal where I'm thrown off because I hate to be thrown off by anything so um, I know there are people who are like birth control pills work for me I love them do you sis I'm glad it works for you and I pray that you you know you're not harmed in the in the long run or nothing you know nothing happens to you that um, is caused by the birth control pills that's my hope for you um, but yeah it just did not work for me so that's kind of why I've moved on to something else 
Um, so yeah, birth control is definitely something that no one really discusses before you get married. I think that everyone just assumes that you'll figure it out. Um, but for me, it was like, hey man, either you tell me or I'm having a child. Like, either you tell me your secrets or I'm having three kids, you know? So, um, like tomorrow morning. But like, I think, um, there's so much like, freedom and sharing and there's so much freedom and like just helping everyone else understand like hey these are your options and there are so many options um, but you have to do your research and you have to like communicate with your spouse like hey what do you think about this and or how do you f how do you yourself feel about what it is and just making sure you're, you're tracking how these things are impacting your body in the long run um, and also in the present like moment that's super important um, so yeah I'm going to go ahead and jump on to number three. All right, so number three is basically just adjusting to a new person in your environment. Like I, in my head, I'm like, oh my gosh, like marriage is gonna be like this sleepover where your best friend never goes home, never goes home, right? That's what I, that's what I, I had in my mind, which is true, which is indeed very, very true. But I think also we forget that one, this best friend of yours never goes home. Therefore, this best friend of yours is always in your personal space. Always. And it's not a matter of like, you know, oh, he's like this close to me. Like he's always like next to me. No, no, that's not what it means. It means that, you know, he might have gone into the kitchen and done something and you're like, oh, wow, the plate that I put away is now out. Or you go into the room and you're like, okay, I just made the bed. And now the bed is not made because the, the spouse is laying in it. So things are changing and things are being manipulated in your environment. And if you're someone that's more so like controlish and needing control, you're gonna have to learn how to relinquish control in marriage. And I think no one really talked to me about that much before I got married. I think they just said, I think a lot of people just said that, oh, you're on, you're on your honeymoon phase. You know, you'll come down from it soon. I'm like, no sis, tell me the facts. Lay down the law. Tell me what's gonna happen, okay? I need to be ready. When things pop off, I need to be ready, okay? So um, for me, that was definitely something that I had to like learn. Like I need to relinquish control. I cannot see things and be like, oh my gosh, wow, no, that's wrong, that's wrong. That needs to be picked up. That needs to be taken away. Like, I cannot live my life like that. It's just not realistic. It's not healthy. And it's not helpful for my marriage. Now there are times where I will speak and say, hey babe, like let's see if we can start doing this a different way. or communicating it in a, an effective manner that's honoring and polite to my um, spouse to help him understand that I truly desire for us to work together and to maintain an environment where we can both be happy and comfortable in. So that would definitely be my third point. No one really discusses that. And I, I think everyone just thinks that marriage is just this happy-go-lucky, you know, thing that just works out. But it's like, no, someone is in your space, dude. And you have to learn how to, like, you know, regulate. You have to learn how to, like, turn a blind eye to some things. Like, you can't point out every wrong every single day. Like, you'll literally just be a talking drum. Like, just talking all the time. And that's not helpful, healthy, or realistic either. So there are some things that you're gonna have to let go. There's some battles that you're gonna have to not fight, okay? You feel me, sis? So those are things that I think um, really, 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 um, that I've noticed in my current marriage. So I really hope that these three points have helped you. Um, I don't know if I ever resolved my birth control discussion, but we're currently like not really like doing like anything right now we're kind of in the in transition to going um towards a more natural family planning um so we'll keep you up to date with that maybe i'll do a video update on how that's going um birth control to transitioning to fam natural family planning just to let you guys know how that's been um but thank you guys so much for watching this video um i will be doing a q and a so if you are not already subscribed make sure you subscribe to this video and i'll be making that my part two video so um click back or check for a link below and it should be my description bar um in a week or maybe even today who knows um so thank you guys so much for watching if you're not already subscribed make sure you subscribe like this video, if it was helpful, let me know. Comment down below um, just to share your views and your thoughts on what I said. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching and I hope to see you guys in my next video.